A PNP is a pediatric nurse practitioner. We can diagnose, treat, prescribe, just like a doctor would, but with the touch of a nurse. Kids A to C with the PNPs. Always for West Apparently. Hi everyone, welcome to Kids A to Z with the PNPs. Where each week we take a closer look at some of the common health problems affecting our kids. And we're your hosts, I'm Dominique. And I'm Courtney. Happy New Year, Courtney. Happy New Year, Dom. And happy 2020 to everybody out there. I uh, hope welcome. everybody had a great New Year and holiday with your family. Yeah. So this week we are back and we're talking about the letter R, which we'll be talking about respiratory viruses, illnesses, and um, most specifically RSV. RSV. RSV is um, a virus we hear a lot about, especially at this time of year. RSV stands for, it's very difficult to say. <laughs> I've been practicing for 15 years and I still have a hard time saying it. Okay. Respiratory syncytial virus, but everybody just knows it as RSV. So RSV is a very common virus that we see, especially uh, this time of year in like the winter months. Mm -hmm. um, almost every child will have had RSV at some point before the age of two. Mm -hmm. So it is very common. In most children, it is just like the common cold, you know, cough, runny nose. But some of our kids can get a little bit more sick with this virus because it is a pretty nasty virus. Mm -hmm. So our kids that are most at risk are our um, infants younger than six months, our premature infants, or children that have underlying health conditions. Mm -hmm. So typical symptoms of RSV are uh, your common cold symptoms, cough, nasal congestion, um, fever. Um, most of these symptoms resolve within one to two weeks. Um, more serious symptoms of RSV um, can be wheezing and difficulty breathing. Typically, um, you know, the symptoms kind of peak at day three to day five of illness. So sometimes, and we always warn our parents, when they start with the colds, expect it to get a little bit worse be before, before it gets, it gets better. better. Yeah. And since RSV is a virus, again, antibiotics are not effective. Um, so things that you can do to help your child uh, get better. Um, nasal suctioning, our young infants, they cannot breathe through their mouth yet. Mm -hmm. They have to breathe through their nose. So we have to keep those nasal passages clear. So good suctioning, um, people are big fans of the nose Frida or just a simple bulb suction works just fine too. With some saline drops or like a saline nasal spray will help kind of thin out um, that nasal congestion, make it easier to pull out. Mm -hmm. If your child does have a fever um, occurring with the illness, you know, your Tylenol or Motrin can help make them feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, Mo no Motrin to uh, kids less than, less than six, six months. months. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're increasing the fluid intake. So for our infants, um, you know, giving them their, their formula. Sometimes these babies need smaller, more frequent meal, you know, feedings. Um, if they're having trouble tolerating their formula because of all the nasal congestion. And if they're not tolerating their formula, they can um, take pe Pedialyte instead. You never want to give your infant water though. And again, um, if you have a humidifier at home, that can be helpful um, while the child's sleeping, put a humidifier on in their room. But again, humidifiers can be breeding grounds for mold, so making sure that that humidifier is cleaned before using it. So when should we seek medical attention um, if our child has a cold or, or RSV virus and it seems to maybe be getting worse. Some signs um, of this are if your child is having uh, trouble breathing, meaning they're labored breathing, breathing fast, um, what we call having retractions, meaning their stomach is sucking in underneath their ribs or sometimes even sucking in between their ribs. Mm -hmm. Other signs of distress are um, nose flaring, nasal flaring. Um, it's kind of your child is having trouble getting air. So that's yep. definitely signs that you want to bring them into the hospital. Or if you're noticing that um, your child is having this labored breathing and they're also like head bobbing, like they're trying to get more air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like always if you're concerned that they're not tolerating enough fluid intake and they might be dehydrated, uh, time to bring them in. Yeah, or if your child is incredibly drowsy or difficult to arouse, they should be seen. So all of these signs are actually signs of a, a more serious complication of RSV called bronchiolitis, not to be confused with bronchitis. bronchitis. Mm -hmm. This is actually um, swelling in the lower airways. They produce more mucus and it can cause them to have these symptoms of, of trouble breathing. And wheezing. Mm -hmm. 
Bronchiolitis is typically seen in children less than two, and RSV is actually the most common cause of bronchiolitis and pneumonia. Yeah. And I think it's important to note here, we say a lot in the hospital, like not all that wheezes is asthma. Babies wheeze for lots of reasons. Their lungs, those airways are sm naturally smaller than ours. They easily become inflamed. They can get plugged with mucus and you can hear that wheezing noise. Um, breathing treatments like those that we give to kids with asthma are usually not effective in bronchiolitis, um, although in a small percentage of kids they are. But most of the time, um, you know, uh, wheezing is normal with RSV. Another common respiratory illness is pneumonia. And pneumonia is actually when fluid fills the sacs in the lungs. It can have fluid or, or mucus build up, and it can cause signs of fever, trouble breathing, um, and sometimes even abdominal pain. When, you know, if kids have this, that's usually diagnosed by your healthcare provider with a physical exam and then often a, a chest x-ray. And typically, this type of infection is treated with antibiotics, but not always. So another respiratory illness that we see quite frequently at the hospital is what we call croup. Uh, croup is a viral illness. It's usually caused by uh, the para-influenza virus, um, which is just a fancy name for another cold virus. But croup is distinctive in that it tends to cause like a, um, a barky cough. A lot of times parents will say that their kid sounds like a, a seal uh, when they're coughing. Um, and basically what croup does, it's, it's a virus that um, causes inflammation in the upper airway, uh, which is the trachea or the windpipe. So the tissue that lines that, that uh, the upper airway becomes inflamed and it almost becomes like an hourglass, so it can be hard for your child to get air in and out. So it causes this um, noisy breathing, which we call strider. Um, so typically what we do for croup, um, if, it's, uh, if your child is experiencing strider at rest, meaning they're not crying, they're not upset, and you're still hearing that noisy, harsh breathing. Um, sometimes we will give steroids and there are special breathing treatments that we can give. However, if your child is experiencing strider at rest, uh, in addition to these croupy symptoms, um, you'll want to have them evaluated um, at the nearest healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, croup can you know, be a kind of a concerning illness for parents because it causes such a, that noisy breathing mm -hmm. and kids will have that barky, noisy breathing sound often when they're you know, running or playing. But like Court said, the most important thing is we don't want to hear that when they're at rest. Yeah. I think that wraps up everything for our common respiratory illnesses and RSV. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, Give us a like, give us a share. You can always email us at kidsa to z at dmc.org. And what are we talking about next week? Next week is the letter S, and we will be talking about screen time. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.